Puneet Gupta, thank you so much for joining us. 60 patents and counting. Uh, you know, how exciting is this whole era of disruption for you? No, this is amazing. I think if, if you are, I think the key thing is you being inspired. If you are inspired enough, you look at every small conversation, every small pain, every small opportunity and there is, there is something hidden there. So I think it doesn't take too much of your mental faculties really to think through about the next innovation because it's all around, you just need to just keep watching. Uh, what do you think will change then in 2016? I, th I think in 2016, my biggest belief or at, uh, at least excitement is that this whole strategy talk about disruption would shift from an uber disrupting the transportation industry. I think we have beaten it to death. Okay, uh, I think the opportunity is to look at disruption in terms of it being very real. And, and my thinking there is therefore about these notions of micro experiences. Okay? The disruption comes when it is truly a disruption for the end user and you cannot build a great platform or technology to disrupt. You got to rewire yourself where every day you're thinking about who is my end user? What are the journeys? What are those moments of truths? So if I am driving a car and suddenly meet with an accident, and I have this insurance app that I had downloaded several months back on my phone, now the app tells me about premium, next you, features, etc. But there is an opportunity for an organization, that insurance company, to use that app that somehow I downloaded for whatever reason to, to really uh, detect this moment of truth. It's not very difficult for that app to figure out, hey, there has been sudden deceleration. And therefore, if you can detect that probably uh, I am in the midst of an accident, the app can just behave to me, hey, Paneet, can I help you? Do you need an ambulance? Can I organize an alternate pickup for you? Can I get my agent to come and look at the option? So I think disruption is going to be looking at those micro experiences and that going to require rewiring of your mind, the way you think of disruption technology and everything. So two or three areas where you think many uh, enterprises that are seeking to go digital or uh, uh, you know are already in the process of becoming digital might go wrong. Yeah, I, th I think the biggest thing would be that the digital strategy and thinking is being done too much top down by people who, who don't live in the digital age, okay? My daughter or, or those young kids, they know how digital is, so you need to increase the voice of the millennials, okay? People who live this life can imagine what could be better and what different for. For those of us who have not lived this life, anything is a bonus, but something uh, somebody who lives this life can really so very sharply think. I think the biggest mistake would, would be either not turning yourself into true digitals or not having enough voice of those people who can truly give you those insights. So do you see that actually companies uh, uh, are lacking in struggling these millennial big, big time. voices? Struggling big time, struggling big time. So I think uh, some of the forward looking companies that I speak to, I'm seeing that just by looking at some of the facts like what is the percentage of the employee base which are many millennials what is the average age of the leadership how are you creating those decision groups where there's right participation from them so the companies which are doing that uh, doing this well i think are, are going to have a better chance but most companies in my opinion most industries in my opinion are struggling uh, how are things changing at brillio with this changing environment Oh, absolutely. I, th I think I am a technologist by heart, so my first instinct would be to look at technology and how it would be. But what I think this, this mission to get this done has taught me that it is as much as a cultural element. So first, we are giving extraordinary and some would say crazy amount of voice to the millennials. In fact, we shut down our policy committee, which defines all the HR committee, and then we created a panel of young uh, of young guys and girls and they are defining uh, what those policies should be and then we're picking up some of those entrepreneurs and say hey do with it go ahead and get it done and if you get stuck somewhere come to me and I'll I'll sort it out for you and even in the way we are seeding new units we are taking a very entrepreneurial approach hey as a leader I feel inspired that this area is important so if you feel very high about artificial intelligence go do it I'll make a seed investment inside it. You go and figure it out and prove in six months. 
that this can be bigger. So that entrepreneurial desire that not only my job is to creating technology, but proving that this can be big so that the company invests more into that. I think that kind of thinking is, is sort of uh, present all over the company. So how many ideas are you incubating at Brilio? Oh, uh, uh, I think centrally, perhaps just four or five, but, but across the organization, there are young entrepreneurs who have those ideas. And there are a lot more that we are incubating where we're saying that, hey, we'll keep you at an arm's distance, we'll support you. If some issue comes, we'll just sort it out for you and let the better ones filter out. So in terms of total ideas, many more, perhaps 15 or 16 ideas at any time, but we are reducing the number of ideas that we are centrally uh, focusing on and building. Okay, Paneet, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure.